Hey guys, uh, I receive a lot of messages from you asking me to record a video about my studio and equipment, so I decided to do it for you uh, and show you my hardware synthesizers. Uh, one important thing is that it will not be a demonstration of their capabilities because these are practically endless. Um, I just want to show you how I use use them. Also, at the end of this video, I will answer three questions uh, that you asked me on my social media a few weeks ago. Um, but first, I would like to explain how it's all connected. So, uh, here I have few synthesizers which are connected to Behringer X32 mixer. Uh, and here I have three synthesizers which are connected to Roland MX1 mixer. Uh, master signal is connected to my SSL uh, audio interface. Also here, every synthesizer is connected by a MIDI uh, using two MIDI splitters, so I can uh, control each one of them uh, from my computer. Uh, so, okay, let's uh, begin with the MOOC Subsequent 37. I think that this brand does no need to be introduced to anyone. Uh, you know, it's MOOC, it's legendary. Uh, pure analog sound uh, with modern features in this case. And I'm using it with uh, delay and reverb. Uh, so here I have uh, TC Electronic Flashback 2X4 uh, delay and TC Electronic Hall of Fame 2X4 reverb. For those who are wondering why I'm using uh, guitar pedals with Moog, uh, I will show you the sound with and without these boxes, so check it out. Uh, subsequent 47 have a very useful feature, which is VST plugin. Uh, it allows me to control synthesizer in Ableton Live, so I can automate parameters, switch presets. Uh, it's just full integration between hardware and software, and I think every modern synthesizer should have uh, this feature because it's very, very useful. So, summarizing, uh, I'm using MOOC for different kinds of sequences, arpeggios, uh, analog leads, and sometimes bass lines. Now let's take a look on Access Virus TA2. I am convinced that everyone who is interested in musical equipment knows this synthesizer. Uh, Virus is great for trancey sounds like uh, leads, arpeggio, sequences, uh, plucked sounds, uh, and also for uh, beautiful pad and deep ambient soundscapes.
good feature is the powerful effect unit uh, and EQ. Many synthesizers have it built in, uh, but it often doesn't sound good. Uh, I love to use long warm reverbs and stereo delays and here it sounds really good so I don't have to mess around with external effects. Next one is Novation Peak, uh, a new design that combines the advantages of an analog and digital synthesizer. Uh, the most interesting peak feature is uh, the oscillator section. Uh, we have classic waveforms uh, here and 60 digital wavetables which uh, can be modified and updated. As the virus, it have very good sounding long reverb and delay. This is important to me because it allows me to create a complete sound on one device. And now let's check a few of my sounds. So, in studio I'm using PIC for ambient soundscapes, pads and sometimes leads. On stage is great for bass lines and sequences. Now let's move on to the second part of my setup and start with Roland uh, System 8. A great feature is the plug out function uh, that allows you to emulate uh, legendary synths like the Jupiter 8, uh, Juno 106. Um, System 8 also have dedicated plugin and it works also as standalone VST so you don't have to turn on the hardware to work on it. Uh, but it's extra paid. Uh, I like to use Roland for basic parts, uh, leads, chords and for all of 18 sounds.
Behringer DeepMind 12. Um, for me, it's a very inspiring machine. I just like to play on it, tweaking knobs, using arpeggiator. It's, it's really good fun and above all, very inspiring to create new tracks. And the great feature of the DeepMind 12 is the huge FX unit developed in collaboration with TC Electronic and Clark Technique. In addition to all sorts of reverb and delays, you can even find also a compressor here. Thanks to the four FX slots, you can get really great sound. Another important feature for me is the extensive arpeggiator that allows me to create really amazing sequences, uh, which you can hear in many of my tracks. Nordleads A1, Red Beauty, straight from Sweden. Usually I'm using it for background parts, leads and plug sounds, but also I love to just sit in on front of it and tweak knobs, uh, change waveforms. It also is a very inspiring synthesizer. Uh, I love the performance mode, which allows me to use up to four patches at one time, uh, even on splitted uh, keyboard. Uh, sound quality is also amazing, so let's listen.
Okay, uh, another Behringer synth in my studio. This time it's a replica of Cork Monopoly, which was released in early 80s. Unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to use the original one, but uh, I seen many reviews and comparisons on the internet uh, where practically everyone tries at Behringer's work. Uh, it's a very heavy, feels very solid, uh, and when I'm playing uh, with it, I feel that I'm dealing with a simple, pure device without any electronic frills. It's really a very pleasant uh, ex experience. Uh, the interesting thing about this synthesizer is that you can save a patch here. Uh, the only way to save your sound is to mark the position of the knobs on a special sheet uh, prepared by the manufacturer. Yeah, strange thing in, in these times of modern synthesizer, but I think it has its charm. Uh, I love to use it for bass lines and sequences with a little bit of uh, reverb and delay, so check it out. Uh, I decided to buy this synthesizer after watching the first presentations on the internet. Uh, WaveState uh, differs from my other synthesizers in the way uh, it generates the sound. Uh, this is due to samples and wave sequences, uh, thanks to which you can get very interesting sequences, uh, deep soundscapes and sounds of, for example, coils, violins or pianos, uh, which is very useful, useful especially for live performance. Uh, it's also very good for ambient long soundscapes, uh, but to be honest, my wave state is mostly used for strings and coils. I have only recently begun to delve into creating sequences.
And finally, not a synthesizer, Behringer X32 Rack Digital Mixer. Uh, I use it both on the, in the studio and on the stage. Uh, it's very versatile device with all the features that I need. Uh, 16 mono inputs means 8 stereo using channel link, uh, but if you run out of it, uh, you can extend them by S16 uh, add-on. A very important thing is a channel strip for uh, each input where I can set up an EQ, gate, compressor and even a sidechain effect. And also the FX section is uh, very well equipped with various types of reverb delays, chorus, uh, compressors. Um, that's really uh, all I need to work with hardware synthesizers. You can save all the settings so you can actually have a different setting for each track, which is great on stage. I'm also using uh, its audio interface to record synthesizer to Ableton Live. And finally, Roland MX-1. Uh, there are three synths connected to it, Moog, Virus and Peak, and also a master from X32 Mixer. Uh, I use it mainly because uh, I can quickly tweak low pass and high pass filter on uh, each channel uh, and use the sidechain compression, uh, which is useful for free session when I'm just improvised. Okay, now it's time for your questions uh, and I will help myself with the notes if you don't mind. Uh, first one, uh, do you plan to setting up a modular system? Uh, so for now I'm not, but of course I am very curious about uh, modular synthesizer and maybe in the future I will buy some basic model like Depfer A100 uh, to learn this kind of synthesizer. So yeah, we'll see. If you were limited to using only one synthesizer on which you would have to create an entire track, uh, what equipment would be your choice and why? Uh, I think it will be Access Virus TA2 because it's uh, most versatile of my synthesizer. It sounds great in leads, pads, arpeggios, bass lines, and even uh, drums are not the problem for this beast. So I think, yeah, Access Virus TA2. Okay, next one. Uh, what DAW do you use for recording and how do you save the presets of external instruments, also analog, uh, in your DAW? Okay, so I'm using Ableton Live for entire music production. Uh, and few of my synthesizers have dedicated plugin. It's a um, Moog Subsequent and Roland System 8. I also have few unofficial uh, plugins for Nordlead A1, Behringer DeepMind 12 and Novation Peak, but to be honest, it doesn't work very well. Uh, so if I'm unable to, to use the plugin, I save the preset in the synthesizer memory uh, and I write its number on the assigned track uh, in, the, in the Ableton Live project uh, to remember what patch I should, I should call uh, when opening the project. And for Behringer Monopoly, I'm using these sweet sheets. How do you record, modify, automation? Uh, so the answer is uh, very similar to the previous. Uh, it depends on the dedicated plugin, if synthesizer have it. Uh, I'm doing in the, it in Ableton Live. Uh, if not, I'm just turning the knobs and recording it live. Next question. Uh, which synth was your first? I had Yamaha CS1X 20 years ago. So the funny thing is I also have a Yamaha to, uh, CS1X but 10 uh, uh, years ago. Uh, my first hardware synthesizer was Roland D50. Uh, to be honest, I bought it because of jar presets. Uh, great, great machine, but I, uh, unfortunately I don't have it anymore. Okay, uh, when playing live, do you use built-in sequencers and arpeggiators or do you direct all the notes from your DAW? It depends on the synthesizer. For example, Behringer DeepMind 12 and Access Virus uh, have uh, very great um, arpeggiators with a lot of patterns. Uh, but for sequences, I prefer MIDI clips from Akai Force. Next one. Uh, do you have your favorite sound library or are you always looking for something new when composing a new piece? Uh, so. It, it depends, of course, uh, each of these synthesizers has a list of uh, my favorite factory sounds and also another list of my own sounds. Uh, sometimes I just choose one of them, sit, sit by and play with the knobs and create new, new ones from scratch or, or modify existing. 
uh, presets and when I get an interesting sound, I save it on a separate list, uh, which I use later for our new tracks. Next one. Uh, with this amount of hardware, what makes you buy another synthesizer? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good question, really. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is just curiosity. Uh, you know, I, I often watch uh, various devices, synthesizers on the in internet, reading tests, uh, watching presentation on YouTube, uh, listening to, to its sounds, uh, but it's not enough for me. You know, I, I'm, I, I want to touch this device, try it, uh, just work on it for a few days. Uh, so yes, I, I buy often, but also I sell often because sometimes it, it, it turns out that in fact the equipment is not good enough for me and, or just not suits my needs, uh, even if it looked great on YouTube. Next one, uh, in the track Desert of Lost Souls live performance uh, at minute 351, you play on Roland System 1 uh, and I think the notes are repeated with the delay, yes. Uh, how do you manage to uh, be so perfectly timed in sync? What's the secret? <laughs> so, uh, the secret is the MIDI clock. Uh, sequencer, in this case a laptop with Ableton Live, sending uh, a MIDI clock to uh, Roland System 1. So it, it, it just recognizes uh, the tempo uh, of the track. That's why the delay uh, sounds are perfectly uh, synchronized to, to track tempo. Okay, next one. Uh, can you disconnect laptop from music creation? Can you just do live performance without laptop? Uh, so if we are talking about music production, no, the computer is my main tool. Um, but about live performances, technically yes. For live gigs I'm using a laptop only as a virtual synthesizer uh, with a couple of plugins which I can play of my on my native uh, instruments Control S49 key uh, MIDI keyboard. Um, the heart of my live setup is a Kai Force, which is actually a, also a computer uh, in a workstation housing. So what's the difference? I don't know, maybe, maybe it looks more professional. <laughs> Uh, anyway, as a one-man band, I have to use a sequencer, uh, no matter if it's a laptop, Akai Force, uh, keyboard workstation or old Akai MPC, all these devices are computers with the difference that you cannot run the Witcher White Hunt on it. So. Okay, next one. Uh, what is your go-to synth for famous phased string sound like the Eminent 310 Small Stone Phaser Effect? Uh, so, of course, it's Behringer DeepMind 12. So, that's all. Thank you for your questions, uh, for watching, and see you soon, maybe in another video about uh, music production process. Until then, see ya.